There is no arguing that Inazuma is the best update Genshin Impact has added so far. With a whole new map design and new enemies, as well as new architecture and landscape for us travelers to, well, travel to. But with such a huge pile of content that we have to consume, we only see and appreciate surface level things that we can only afford a glance at most, without much praise as compared to the main feeds it contains. Hey, what's up, Aru? I saw my last video on the 10 things you missed got quite a lot of views and to be honest, I wasn't expecting that many, like uh, almost 8,000 views in a span of what, three days, I think? Is it three days? I don't know. And I thought I'd make another one and see how you guys liked it or not. So without further ado, here's 10 details in Inazuma you might not know about. After you disembark from your journey to Inazuma, walking into the port of Rito, you're immediately greeted by a huge sakura tree with wooden trinkets surrounding it. These aren't simple decorations though. These are called emma, which are wooden wishing plaques. And the word emma roughly means picture and horse respectively. I, I have no idea which, which letter means picture or horse there, I don't know. These emma come from a Japanese practice of wishing and asking for good fortune. Now it wasn't always wooden plaques they offered back then. Traditionally, people would donate horses for good fortune and that their wishes would be fulfilled. But horses were way too expensive and some people who would want to make wishes couldn't afford to give a horse. Because well, not many people could afford a horse anyway, let alone give it. So after some time, they just decided on the Emma, which was these wooden wishing plaques. I won't go into more detail, so you can just look up more info about Emma through the internet. Moving on to the second thing you might not know about. Once you leave the initial village of Rito and cross the beaches, you'll find a small farmland called Konda Village. The first thing you'll notice here are these fish flags. You're probably wondering, huh, why are there fish flags on this farm? Well, they're called Koinobori. Uh, I hope I said that correctly. I probably butchered that, that name. Now, the translation in English is literally just carp streamers. So they're not flags. And they are displayed to celebrate Children's Day, which was originally Boys' Day, and then changed to Children's Day. I won't go into detail there, but the order dictates that black is the father, red or pink is the mother, and the next colors are representative of the children as well as the color and position determining their age. Now something about koi and carp. Koi fish are actually domesticated versions of the common wild carp. And the word koi in Japanese is a homophone for another word meaning affection or love. So the symbolism of koi as well as the order of the streamers represent their affection and appreciation of, well, their children. Didn't expect that, did you? Moving on to the third thing you might not know about. While walking around Konda village, you'll notice these white ghost-looking dolls hung up outside the doors or windows of each house. These dolls are called the Teru Teru Bozu or the Teru Teru Shrines. Now Teru Teru Shrines often found near farms are small traditional handmade dolls made of white paper or cloth that Japanese farmers began hanging outside their window by a string. This talisman is supposed to have magical powers to bring good weather and to stop or prevent a rainy day. The words Teru Teru Bozu translates to shiny shiny monk or shiny shiny bald head. Now, the story of whence it came is kinda up for debate with one of the origin stories being a broom carrying girl that enchants the weather and prevents the rain from pouring. Sound familiar? Now for the fourth thing you might not know about. While following the path into Konda village, as well as all the way to Inazuma city, you'll often see these small houses on the sides of the road. These are by no means houses for small people, but they're called Kamidana, which are shrines that quite literally means God Shelf. Kamidana, I guess. As well as serve as a place to worship the Kami, meaning gods. This concept of worshiping Kami and the use of Kamidana stem from the indigenous Japanese religion Shinto. Something interesting, however, is that the kamidanas in Inazuma are placed outdoors, which is very different from what we find in our world. <laughs> in our world. <laughs> Oftentimes, the kamidana is placed indoors, or if it's placed outdoors, it's often accompanied by a shelter, probably a different type of shrine, more inclined to Inazuma perhaps. 
I don't know. Next up, Ronins are a drifter or wanderer, which were samurai without a lord or master in Japanese feudal era. A samurai that became masterless upon the death of its master or after the loss of his master's favor or privilege. The samurai mobs around Inazuma are most likely ronins that lost the favor of the late shogun of Inazuma, Raiden Shogun, or probably have been ronins for a long time. Runaway vision holding samurai perhaps? Who wanted to escape the shogun's hunting decree? I don't know. I'll leave it up to you guys. Moving on to number 6, this isn't really something you might have missed, but I wanted to shed some light on it anyway as a form of appreciation. The idol and battle music that you hear when you're wandering around Inazuma is very reminiscent of Japanese music. Of course, we all know that, but the majority of instruments used in some of the soundtracks are done with Japanese folk instruments. These instruments include the famous shamisen guitar, the shakuhachi, which is a Japanese-style flute, the taiko, which are the famously known drums you see in anime, and our favorite sound effect, the tsudumi, which is this. This one was pretty obvious, but I just wanted to show some appreciation to the music production of this game. Now moving on to the seventh thing you might not know about. As you go to some areas of Inazuma, you'll find these red gates. But these gates aren't just arches for aesthetic purposes or for style. They are called Tori Gates. And the main role of a Tori Gate is to distinguish the sacred shrine grounds from the human world. In other words, they serve as a boundary which separates the sacred space from the mundane world where humans live. And once you walk across this story gate, it means that you have entered a sacred special space, which is portrayed very well in Genshin Impact's Inazuma update of story gates, where once you enter through the gate, you are very much like inside a different world. Moving on to the eighth thing you might not know about. Everywhere you go in the vast isles of Inazuma, you'll find numerous foxes, as well as some fox statues. They come in varying sizes, and sometimes even glow. But did you know that foxes and fox statues are taken from the Japanese names Inari, according to Shinto beliefs, is the son of the storm god Susano. The foxes are messengers of Inari and at Inari shrines, as well as foxes also oscillate between a symbol of cunning and powerful possessor of great intelligence and good fortune. Could this possibly be a quick hint on what Raiden Shogun is really like? Or probably, could the foxes be some sort of messaging animal that the Raiden Shogun possesses? If so, then this is an advancement in technology that neither Liwei nor Mondstadt have. On to the second to the last thing you might not know about. When walking around Inazuma, and especially once you enter the Kamisato estate, you are greeted by a cute raccoon that disappears if you go to it. If you follow and find them while they hide, you are given some mora and artifacts. These cute shape-shifting beings are called tanukis, reputed to be mischievous and jolly, masters of disguise and shape-shifting, but somewhat gullible and absent-minded. Quite similar to an upcoming four-star, the tanuki is a symbol of good luck and fortune. One of the reasons for this is because the word tanuki is said to mean luck. And much like in the game, if you're lucky enough to find them and follow them, as well as discover their hiding spots, you're rewarded with great fortune in the form of two star <laughs> in the form of two star artifacts and some mora for your trouble. Moving on to the last thing you might not know about. Sorry, no bonuses this time because I could not find any at the moment. One of the ronins that you fight in Inazuma uses fireworks as a form of damage, where he throws the fireworks while dashing back and inflicting AoE pyro damage. Now if we don't already know from the trailers, as well as me going into the story, fireworks are only and specifically made and sold by Yoimiya's family. But how did these ronins possess these explosive items? Are the Nagonohara family selling firecrackers to shady people? Or has there been an event where a caravan of firecrackers were stolen and then used by these ronins. I very much support the latter because that means that these ronins have been raiding caravans that move from town to town, showing how alive this game really is. 
and not just a mishmash of random enemies with random abilities. So those are the 10 tiny details in Inazuma you might not know about. I'm not sure if I can find some more of these but I probably will. <laughs> But right now, these are the details that what stood out to me the most during my initial playthrough of the Inazuma. I'm barely moving the story forward and I'm just chilling in Rito at the moment. So I might find some more spicy details for you guys. Anyway, like and subscribe if you didn't know some of these details and comment down below on what you think about the details I've mentioned. You think some of them are wrong? Do you think some of them uh, are missing some extra some extra details, I guess. Uh, I keep seeing details a lot. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Bye!